Utah State 31, UConn 20. UConn opened up 14 to nothing, and I will tell you, I was flummoxed. I was perplexed. I, what's a good word for this? Because I did not see this coming at all. Like, I had no idea what to expect from this. Utah State, huge plays last year. I expected, you know, a few things early, and they did. They came out in the second quarter and put up 24 points unanswered. Uh, it was 24 to 14 at the half. But, man, I I looked at this, and I, I said, man, I know that you don't necessarily know what to expect out of UConn, but this lets me know that Utah State is not a great football team for sure this season. Uh, and, obviously, yeah, you were going to have some regression this year because Utah State was not great last year, and yet they still won 11 ball games. And they got lucky in some games. Maybe they should not have won, but they ended up coming out with the W at the end of the day. This go-round, they did have more offensive yards per play, which 7.15 yards per play is good. Not going to say that. Logan Bonner was 20 out of 29. Uh, he had 281 yards, three touchdowns. The running back for Utah State, Calvin Taylor, uh, excuse me, Calvin Tyler, had uh, 33 carries for 161 yards. That's another interesting part of this. Blake Anderson does not like to run the ball, and they had 54 rushes against UConn. Like, it's not like they were blowing them out. It's not like they were trying to run the clock. But 54 rushes, and they were successful. Uh, the backup running back had a great day as well. So, the thing that uh, concerns me a little bit is UConn put up 6.39 yards per play. Now, it was only 364 total yards because Utah State kind of took over in the second quarter. And then, it just it, this was still a, a ball game, by the way. It was 24-20 to 20 in the fourth quarter. Like, 10 minutes left in this game. But... I mean, the Jim Mora experiment, uh, so far, so good. Like, this team is still fighting, and that's not what you could say about the Randy, Ed, uh, Randy Edsel bunch, for sure. So, uh, looking at it, I mean, Utah State had eight scoring opportunities. They put up 3.88 points per scoring opportunity. Uh, both of them about the same field position, et cetera. Uh, but I saw good signs from UConn. They tried. Like, they played hard for Jim Mora. And that's not what you could say for the last bunch. Utah State, I think they will get better as they go along. I don't think that they were trying to show a whole lot in this ballgame. They do have Alabama coming up next. And, of course, once they get into Mountain West play, I think we'll see a whole different team. But, man, you want to talk about jumping from uh, out of the frying pan into the fire kind of kind of situation here? Going from playing UConn to going into Tuscaloosa, that's a little bit of a different animal. I will, I will certainly say that. That is a different beast. So, uh, Utah State was good, though. Uh, you know, they, they get some, some good plays. Their win probability was up basically the entire game, even when they get down uh, 14 to nothing. But, uh, but, yeah, I mean, the offensive EPA for Utah State was 14.56. For UConn, it was 1.66. It was, you know, UConn actually looked like a competent football team, and we haven't seen that in quite some time for sure on that one. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. And make sure to leave a nice five-star review. You can follow Gary on Twitter, at GaryWCE. And the show is at Winning Cures. Be sure to check out the merch in our web store and share the show.